Try again, try again, try again, try again. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Hey, I think you're live. We back? Are we back? Hopefully we're back. Okay, so I'm just going to share this so people can find the link. Are we back? I hope we're we, back. We will try again. We, we, we will try again. We will make some friends. We will try again. This is not the end. We will try again. It'll work out in the end. Doesn't matter if we don't make it this time. We'll try, try again. It'll work out in the end. This is just the beginning. It work in the end. We back? We're back, right? It, it sounds right. good. Well, listen, folks, we apologize for the internet not wanting to cooperate this morning. But we hope that you are here to learn some things about the ocean with us this morning. Because we've got lots of good stuff. there earlier on i sang a little tune i'm not sure if you caught it about a certain kind of white whale that is lives right here in nova scotia sometimes very rarely but definitely here in canada a lot of the time because they make their way up to the arctic in fact they're designed their bodies are designed specifically so they can get underneath ice that's why they have no dorsal fin so beluga whales, and that's a fun little fact that I learned earlier as well, is that beluga comes from the Russian word for white. Isn't that interesting? The Russian word for white. So we hope that you are back with us and that you are joining us in a minute. Just right now, we've got, we've got our trivia started. And we're going to share the screen up. So again, folks, if you're having any issues with us, just jump on over to the comments on YouTube. Let us know. We'll do our best to resolve it as we go. But for right now, we're going to jump into it. Chris is going to throw up some of these questions. And we are going to get started learning about the ocean together. Let's try, Jan. Let's give it a shot here. Yeah, sorry about those problems. Of course, we tested everything out and everything was working perfect until it wasn't that's how it goes that's how it happens on these zoom things sometimes we're zooming and cruising but we are excited to be with everybody so hopefully everyone's back there's a lot of people that we had 150 people and now we only have 30 people so hopefully everybody can make their way back we'll give some people some time before we get really too far into it um I'm just going to go check on the comments. Jan, maybe you can read through what's on the screen there for me. Absolutely. So, folks, if you're playing along with us this morning, we have a couple simple directions so to make this as easy and as fun as possible. Now, to play along, all you need to do is follow along with our live stream. If you are listening and hearing us and seeing us, you are probably doing that very thing right now. Number two is write down your answers or your best guesses to what the questions are. Take a photo of you playing because we'd love to hear from you and see you. And when you've got your answers compiled at the end of each round, please send the picture and send us your actual answers to trivia at a4adventure.ca. We'll go over the correct answers all together at the end of each round. So let us know if you have a really good score or a really bad score. Don't worry about it. We're all here to learn together. So 
after the, each round, just put down your answers in the comments, but he also sent it to us as well. Number five is we will send you a few gifts to your email. So if you did win your round, we will be sending some awesome prizes your way. But the number one rule, folks, always is to have some fun and to learn a few new things. If there's something, too, that you'd like to share, please share it in the comments. We'd love, love to hear from you. So we're going to get going. We're going to get rolling. And again, should you have any questions, comments, concerns, just throw up a comment in the comment section down in the doobly-doo. And without further ado, let us get started. Yeah, so we can go back to this page. If anyone is joining us, we can always go back. But really, the like Jan said, this is just to have fun. So grab your pencil. I have my favorite pencil. Jan, look at this. Whoa. Yeah. It's my That's wooden carved pencil. pencil. <laughs> from the archives so i'm going to write down all my right answers um and anyone who sends us an email at trivia at aforadventure.ca we're going to reply to every one of those emails and we're going to send and attach some really fun activities that you can do at home really excited because uh back to the sea has a printed home marine themed coloring sheet for anyone who sends in an email and we have a couple other things that we're going to attach to that as well so please be sure we want to see what everyone's wearing, uh, you know, how excited you are back at home because we're excited to be here with you guys. So Jan, I thought before we got going, we could yeah. share something from the book. This is perhaps, and I always say it's my favorite letter. I have a couple favorites, but for now, we're going to say this is this one is definitely my favorite. Can you read this for me? For all the well, I bet you I can do that. I have my A4 Adventure book right here with me right now. And if you have your A4 Adventure book, by all means, go home, over and grab it. But today's theme is all about the ocean. And O is for ocean on the wild blue sea. It can cause a commotion. It can set your soul free. You may see a dolphin, barracuda, or whale. And when the wind starts to blow, raise up a sail. The ocean is huge, so give it a chance. You could sail off to London or Greenland or France. Now, if you look closely on that picture, you'll see a couple of different marine animals, two types of mammal. On the left-hand side there, you see a whale tail coming out. Now that whale tail could be a lot of different things, but it most likely is a humpback whale. And on the other side of the page, you see some dolphins and those are Atlantic white-sided dolphins that we also have right here in Nova Scotia. We're very lucky to live in Canada because we have so much great wildlife, but specifically the ocean has just wonderful, amazing creatures. And you can also see some ducks and some seagulls who are playing along as well. So always for ocean, and I think we get rolling with some more questions yeah. so we can learn all about we got, it. We got a photo here. We got Jefferson back at home with his mom and pretending to be Norwals. So oh, thank you yes. That. Well, earlier we talked about the beluga whale and the narwhal and the beluga whale are actually closely related. And they're some of the smallest whales in the ocean. Cool. Well, at this point, we're going to bring a special guest who's going to introduce the Back to the Sea Society, which I'm... If you've never been there, you're going to learn a little bit about that. It is such a cool place. So I'm very pleased to welcome Joe. Joe, can you hear us? I can. Can you folks hear me? We can. Welcome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. And thank you, Jan, for reading us that story and singing us that amazing song. I am so, so happy to be here with A for Adventure today. Uh, as they mentioned, my name is Joe, and I am the newest member of the Back to the Sea Society's team. So if you haven't heard of Back to the Sea before, I'm going to give you folks a really quick introduction just so that you know exactly what we're all about. So at Back to the Sea, as our name probably lets you know, we love the ocean. This is great. All of you are here for ocean trivia, so hopefully we can interest you in the ocean as well today. So besides doing ocean education and that sort of work, we run the touch tank. So you can see the beautiful touch tank hut just here on the right side of your screen. So the touch tank hut is a mini interpretive center. Um, so really what that means is that it's a mini aquarium or a community aquarium as we like to call it. 
Um, we have lots of local invertebrate species that you can find here in Nova Scotia. So an invertebrate is an animal that doesn't have a backbone. So that might be a starfish, a sand dollar, a sea urchin, all of these fun creatures we have at the Touch Tank Hut. So you can see on the left side there, a sea star um, and underneath some of our tanks, what it looks like. So unfortunately, the Touch Tank Hut is not open at the moment. As you folks know, it's really important that we're all staying home and staying safe. We hope to open later this summer, but in the meantime, we've got lots of really fun, exciting stuff on our website, backtothesea.org. So one of these fun things that we've been doing is our Shell and Tell series. You can see the screen just on the right there. So Shell and Tell is a fun educational video series where all of us from the Back to the Sea Society like to share information with people like you about all sorts of really exciting species. So just to give you a hint, if you've seen some of our Shell and Tell episodes, you might be a little bit better positioned to answer some of the trivia questions today. Um, you might find a few links there. And if you haven't checked it out yet, we encourage you to go to our website, pop on over, because there's lots of stuff to be learned. And just see some of the, the comments. Some of the comments oh. is asking where you're located. Um, I know you said it already, but. Yeah, so the touch tank is located just adjacent to Alderney Landing in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Um, as I mentioned, we are closed right now, but we really do miss everybody. So we hope that we'll be able to open soon and we'll be able to come see all your smiling faces. For now, we'll just have to settle for Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so just while we're on the topic of online education, I'd like to give a shout out to Oceans Week Halifax. If you folks don't know, June 8th is actually World Oceans Day. Um, and to help celebrate this, there's an event called Oceans Week that is happening here. Uh, it's actually more than a week. It's from the 5th until the 14th of June. Um, but for that, we will be releasing a very special shell and tell. There's all sorts of really fun online activities happening. So if that interests you folks, you can hop on over to oceansweek.ca to learn a little bit more. So I don't wanna keep us too long. I know we're all eager to start the trivia. Um, as Chris and Jan had mentioned, we do have a coloring page that was hand drawn, features some of the species that we have at the Touch Tank Hut. Usually this page is given away to our donors for $5. But because you're all so, so awesome and you're joining us here for trivia today, we wanted to keep the fun going at home. So I'll make sure that gets sent out to all of you later today. Uh, in the meantime, if any parents are interested in our work, you can find uh, this coloring page and lots of other fun stuff on our website, backtothesea.org. We are always so grateful for your support and so grateful for folks like AFO Adventure who have invited us to do this trivia. So I won't hold us up any longer. I think it's about time we got started and we learned some really fun stuff. Awesome. All right, so I'll start us off with the first question. And this is saying that there are over 300 known species of squid in the world. That is a lot of types of squid. On the right here, you can see a picture of the northern shortfin squid. So this is a species that we do find here in the waters of Nova Scotia and uh, the Atlantic provinces around Canada. So the question is, how many species of squid can be found in Canadian waters? So let's think about it. We do know that the northern shortfin squid is here, so that's at least one. But is the total number A, 107, B, 15, C, 30 or D, 64. So I'll give you folks a second. If you've got a paper and pen handy there, make sure to write down which one you think it is. That's I don't a good know. question. Yeah, that's a lot of squid. I, I There's a lot yeah, of squid, yeah. <laughs> I knew I would learn something. Right off the gate, I'm going to learn something. That's awesome. So I'll give you okay. folks just a few more seconds there. Question number two. Perfect. So another fun fact for you folks, the largest animal in the world lives in the ocean. And so just on the side here, I have included a picture of beautiful Peggy's Cove, Nova Scotia. Have you folks visited before? I sure would hope because it really is a beautiful place to see. So speaking a little bit about the ocean, who is this animal? Who is the largest animal in the world? 
do we think that it's the giant squid? Giant squid, they must be pretty big. Do we think it's the great white shark? He sounds like he's probably pretty big too. Do we think it is the giant oceanic manta ray? Is he the biggest in the world? Or do we think that it's D, the blue whale? Maybe the blue whale is the biggest animal in the world. Make mm. sure you folks are writing down your answers there. Which one? All right, question number three. Number three. If you think you've got it there, we'll move on to question number three. So here we're talking about symmetry. We can observe an animal's body by looking at its symmetry. So symmetry means things that look the same. So this question, it might help if you've seen the second episode of our Shell and Tell. We explained the concept a little bit there. But just to give you folks some information, there are three categories of symmetry in nature. Bilateral, which means you're the same on two sides. I'll give you the hint, humans have bilateral symmetry because we are the same on our left side and our right side. There's also radial symmetry. That means the same around an axis like the sun, uh, kind of in a circular shape. And finally, asymmetrical means your sides aren't the same at all. You look crazy and wonky and there is no telling what part is the same as another part. So on the right there, you can see the green sea urchin. So this is actually his shell. When they're alive, they've got all kinds of spikes coming out of all those little white points you see there. So the question for you guys is what kind of symmetry does a sea urchin have? Do you think it's bilateral? So it's the same on its left and right side. Do you think it's pentaradial? So it has five equal parts, penta means five. Do you think it's hexaradial? So it has six equal parts, hexa means six. Or do you think it's asymmetrical and it has no equal parts at all? I'll give you guys a hint. If you look at the picture, you can see that there are some lighter stripes. If you could count those, that might help you answer this question. With some, some big words, Joe. Yeah, we are <laughs> learning a lot about symmetry today and we are learning a lot about the green sea urchin. That's great. Awesome. Okay, let's move on to question four. Jellyfish. Yes. Jellyfish. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to talk about this guy. So a fun fact for everybody out there, jellyfish are mostly water. So the picture that we see on the right here is the lion's mane, and he is the largest species of jellyfish in the world. They can go up to seven feet in diameter with tentacles over 100 feet long. So he what? can get huge. And we actually do find the lion's mane jellyfish here in the waters um, of Nova Scotia. If you've walked on the beach before, you might see the Arctic red jellyfish. They wash up quite a bit, uh, more of a reddish color than the lion's mane, but you can find him as well. So my question for you all, number four, what percentage of a jellyfish's body is made of water? Do you think it's 95%? B, 99%, that's almost entirely water. C, 80% or D, 90%. What do you guys think? Hmm. It's cool either way. 99%. <laughs> Jan says 99%. He thinks jellyfish are almost entirely water. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Oh, no, I've, oh. I've seen these before. <laughs> yeah, you folks will probably find these guys if you've spent time walking on the beach. I'll let you know that. This is a sand dollar. So sand dollars are called echinoderms. Sea urchins and sea stars are also echinoderms. Echino means spiny, prickly, or pointy, and derm means skin. So that means pointy or prickly skin. On the right there, you can see a living sand dollar. We don't see them alive a lot in, on the beach. Usually you'll find them washed up when they're all dried out. So you might've seen them looking white and hard, but this is a living one. You can see around the edges there, he is pretty fuzzy, pretty furry. Those are his little spikes that he uses to actually push food particles into his mouth. So his spiky skin there isn't just to look neat, it does help him eat as well. So my question for you, 
True or false? You can tell how old a sand dollar is just by looking at it. So, I mean, I guess you could always ask him nicely, how old are you? But do you think you can tell just by looking? I don't know. Mm. We have a comment here that William and Callie are watching and they love the ocean and sea creatures. And William has wanted to be a marine biologist since he was two. He's now seven. So that's pretty cool. Thank you for watching. Yes. Wow. Welcome everybody. And William, that is so great to know. I think you could learn so much fun stuff about the ocean. Yeah. So moving okay. on, we're talking a little bit about shells for question number six. So hard shells on an animal help keep them safe, maybe from getting eaten or to let them bury themselves in the sand. So on the right, we've got a photo of an Atlantic sea scallop shell. You folks might know this, but the scallop fishing is pretty big here in Nova Scotia. I used to live down near Digby County and they say that Digby scallops are famous all across the world. So I have included that picture, but we're talking a little bit about the shells of animals. Because here's a fun fact, not all animals that wear a shell grew it themselves. Sometimes they have to find shells from other animals that grew them. So the question number six is which of the following animals gets its shell from another creature? Do we think that A, sea turtles find their shells and crawl in them? Do we think B, clams find shells from another creature? Do you think that C, snee, snee snails, sea snails find shells from another creature? Hey, maybe sea snails are just slugs that found a home, who knows? Or D, do we think that hermit crabs find their shell from another creature? Give you guys a second to write that down. And also I wanna say hello to, to Landon out there. I know he's playing along as well. Hello, Landon. What's Hi, up, buddy? Landon. Hi, Landon. Cool. Okay. Question number seven. Moving and grooving. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. We are on to number seven, and we are talking about cephalopods. Jeez, what a name that is. So the squid is a cephalopod, and so are the octopus and cuttlefish. If you've never seen a cuttlefish before, they're kind of like a flatter squid that lives in warmer waters uh, than this guy on the right might. On the right, we have the long fin squid, another type of squid that you might find in the waters around Nova Scotia. So my question for you is, how do squid swim? Do you think that A, they are jet propulsed, they use jet propulsion to move themselves forward like a jet? Do you think B, they don't swim at all, they can only crawl with their tentacles? C, do they kick their tentacles? Maybe like a doggy paddle or like the way you might swim in the water? Or do you think D, they hitch a ride on fish by sticking to them with their suction cups? If you were a squid, how do you think you would want to move around? Cool. And a, a special shout out, we just uh, got a message from that Annika and Aaliyah Eliana are playing, Annika and Eliana, and they love the ocean and ocean science, and they actually sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. Wow. Oh, cool. That is the no coolest. Way. The ocean's huge. Next time you do that, can you please take me with you? That's me my too. only thing. Me too. That's so cool. Question yeah. number eight. I would love to do that too. Anybody oh, else yeah. out there, if you're like Annika and you're watching us online, let us know what your connection to the ocean is. You know, do you yeah. have any future plans with the ocean? Yeah, please. I also have a, a hello from uh, Maya. And she says, my name is Maya and this is so much fun. Hi, Joe. Oh, hi, Maya. It is so great to be here with you. I hope you're enjoying ocean trivia and I hope that you're learning a lot too. We'll move yeah. on to question eight. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so Canada has the longest coastline in the world, over 200,000 kilometers. That is pretty huge. Just to kind of put that into perspective, here in Nova Scotia, if you wanted to sail across the ocean, it would take only about 5,000 kilometers. So 20,000 kilometers all across the outside is pretty long. So uh, my question for you is which of the following oceans does not border Canada? There are 
three of them that you can find bordering Canada, but one that you cannot. So is that one A, the Atlantic, B, the Pacific, C, the Southern, or D, the Arctic Ocean? If I was living in Canada and I wanted to go swimming, what ocean would I not choose? I'll let you guys think about it. That's a good one. Mm. I want to say hello to Ewan, who is six, and his favorite type of animal. What does it say? A cuttlefish. He thinks the cuttlefish looks like chubby squids. <laughs> that is such a good recognition. The cuttlefish are really cute and they do kind of look like little chubby squids. And also hello to Colin and Lily who are playing in Dartmouth. Yay! Yay! Yeah, Dartmouth. We love that's Dartmouth. Where that's our home. Yeah, that's where we're playing from. And Hazel, Liam, and Henry Allen are playing from Fredericton, New Brunswick. So Hi, everybody you. in Fredericton. <laughs> awesome. Hi, folks. Hi. All right, moving on, we are going to talk about moon snails in this question. So if you visit us at the Touch Tank Hut before, you might know a little bit about the moon snail. They're one of the friends that we've got in our tanks there, and we love moon snails. So a moon snail, when she's going to lay her eggs, she builds a special structure made of sand. You can see it just on the right of the screen there with a little moon, shale, moon snail shell beside it. So this is a pretty neat thing they do. They can use mucus and cement sand into these kind of shapes and put their eggs in the walls to keep them safe. So my question for all of you is what do we call this thing, this shape that we see on the right here? Is it a sand cuff? Maybe B, a moon shoe? C, a snail pocket, or D, a sand collar. Mm. Give you folks a hint. The name is kind of based on the shape of it. So maybe take a look at the shape. Think about what it looks like to you. I have an, I have an idea, I think. Yeah. Chris might know it. Maybe. We'll see. We'll find out. Good guess. Someone just commented about sharks, that my favorite animal is a shark. They are so cute. And look at the next question. Oh, I am so glad that your favorite animal is a shark. The shark is definitely one of my favorite animals as well. In fact, I'm going to bring on a friend to help us talk about this next question. Wow. This ah! is my friend, Big Blue. He might look a little scary, but I promise he's friendly. The sharks will not hurt you. In fact, we don't really see a lot of sharks around here in our waters, but the great white shark does come to Nova Scotia from time to time. When we see them, it's pretty exciting. So a little fact about sharks is that they've been around for a really long time. Scientists think that 450 million years ago is the first time that sharks appeared in the ocean. So they're pretty old. And my question for you is about the great white himself. True or false? The great white shark is the biggest species of shark in the world. What do you guys think? Is he the biggest? They're pretty big. I don't they know. They are pretty big. Hmm. Let's see. They're big. What do you think, Big Blue? They're the biggest. <laughs> Bitch, Big Blue has all the answers. Yeah. I guess he does, yeah. but he's not sharing them with me. So I'll move on to question 11. Some seaweeds have little pockets called air bladders along their prongs. So if you look on the right there, you can see the knotted rack. If you've spent any time walking along the beaches here in Nova Scotia, you might be used to seeing some stuff like this washed up on the shore, maybe looking a little dried out. If you look along all the fronds there, you can see that there's a bunch of little bubbles if you look closely all along the length of the seaweed. So my question for you is what do these bubbles called air bladders do for the seaweed? Do they A, make them sink? Do they B, make them float? Do they C, store nutrients? Or maybe D, they do nothing at all, they just look cool. I'll give you folks a little hint, they are called air bladders. Think about what that name means. It's the probably, biggest. 
air in those pockets. What would that do? A couple more people are saying hello. I want to say hello to Everly. She's having fun. Emmett is playing from Glace Bay. Hi from Coal Harbor, says Camden. Uh, Willie, Wild Willie's book review says playing from Nova Scotia. Alex and Andrea are here from Lawrencetown. Um, someone else, Velocity Games is playing from Halifax. My goodness, Madeline from Dartmouth. She loves Great White Sharks too. Maxwell and Gregory, they also say hello. Willie's loving it from Nova Scotia. <laughs> Milo and Luca want to say hello and they love our book A for Adventure. That's cool. Thank you. So many people. This is great. Hi, everybody. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, this is awesome. I'm so excited to have so many of you guys here. Anybody else who's watching, let us know where you're tuning in from. Say hi to Big Blue. He would love to get to know you. Number 12. So we're talking about the ocean. Approximately what percentage of the Earth's surface is covered by the ocean? So we know the earth is pretty big. We've got land, we've got the ocean, but how much is the ocean? Our choices are A, 65% of the earth, B, 60% of the earth is covered by the ocean, C, 80%, or D, 70%, just cut off there on the bottom. So I'll give you folks a second. This is my last question for round one. What percentage of the Earth's surface is covered by the ocean? Wow, that is, the ocean is big. <laughs> yeah, she sure is. Big, blue, and beautiful. We got some more people saying hi real quick. Hi. You guys finish your answers. What do we got? Who else is saying hello? Peyton is playing from Bedford and he loves learning so much. Hello, Peyton. Robert from Lower Sackville. Lynn's from Stellarton. Math, Mathieu and Luke are watching their mummy study scallops. Ooh. Will and Jax and Ava and, and Lu, Luella from Chester. Philip loves the ocean, especially whales. Oh my gosh, so many people. This is so fun. Well, okay, so here. you think what's time to go over the answers? I think it might be. Okay. So excited to meet everybody, but we've got this. more to learn. Yeah. So our first question was about the squid species found in Canadian waters. If you said C, there are 30 species of squid in Canadian waters, you would be correct. Uh, I wouldn't take the time to name them all because we've got to move on. And also, I don't think I could name them all, but that is a whole lot of different types of squid all around Canada. Very cool. So our next question was, who is the largest animal in the world? And that is the blue whale. He can grow up to 30 meters or about 100 feet. That is longer than two school buses. So this blue whale is pretty massive. Not only do we think he's the biggest animal in the world, but we think he's the biggest animal who ever lived. So that's any really dinosaur. Yeah, even the dinosaurs would have been pretty puny next to this massive guy. So we did have a pretty Tricky question for number three, what kind of symmetry does a sea urchin have? And the correct answer is B, pentaradial. So radial symmetry means it can be broken up in a circle. A sea urchin is a circle and you can cut it like a pie into five equal parts. So if you count the lighter stripes there, you'll see that there are five, just like a sea star that has five arms, this sea urchin can be broken into five parts. Penta means five, so B is pentaradial. Very cool. I just learned something. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Number four, we were talking about the lion's mane jellyfish, the biggest jellyfish in the world. What percentage of a jellyfish's body is made of water? And we have 95% here. So Jen was pretty close with 99. Oh, so close. So close. Four percent off. So 95. That is still a lot of water for one jellyfish. 
And just a reminder about jellyfish, they do wash up on the beach sometime, but even when they're washed up on the beach, they can still sting you. They can still give you um, a bit of a nasty shock there. So just if you see any jellyfish, even if they're washed up on the beach, make sure you give them their space because they could sting you. Moving on, number five, we talked about sand dollars. So the true or false question was, you can tell how old a sand dollar is just by looking at it. And that would be true. Wow. So you can actually count the growth rings on a sand dollar's exoskeleton. So that's the hard plates on the outside of the sand dollar. So you folks may have heard before that you can count the rings on a tree trunk to know how old a tree is. Kind of the same deal here with a sand dollar. Not so easy to see in this picture where he's still covered in hair and fuzz, but they typically live six to 10 years. So you might be able to count up the rings around him and find out just how old that sand dollar is. Oh, very cool. So another question we had for you is which of the following animals gets its shell from another creature? And the correct answer was D, hermit crabs. So we've got a picture here of seaweed pants, the hermit crab. And he was a little bit of a star at the touch tank. Some of our friends at the touch tank, if we get a special name for them, it might stick all summer long. And one of these guys was seaweed pants who was named by a visitor. And that name just kind of carried on with him for a while. So we've just added a little fact here. If you see a shell on the beach, think about giving it a peek or taking a picture and leaving it there for others to enjoy. Because the hermit crab does get its shell from other animals like sea snails, for example, who actually are not slugs. I just found a home, they're a little bit different. Um, but hermit crabs could use these shells to build a new home, to crawl in there and make themselves comfortable. So if you do see a shell, remember that that might be a hermit crab's future home. That's a very good point. Moving on, we talked a little bit about how squids swim. So the answer is a jet propulsion. That's so, so cool. That, that is so cool. Squids are like little underwater jets. Exactly. So to talk a little bit about... Oh. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay, sure. Um, so squids have a mantle on their heads and this is how they suck up water and push it out. And yeah, I would say they probably look a lot like an airplane or a jet when they do that. It allows them to propel themselves forward and they're shaped really good for doing that. That's so cool. Squids are amazing. I just, I'm so in awe of squids. I can't get over how cool they are, especially, and someone mentioned this earlier, the colossal squid. They're huge. On fact, Many years ago, I was in New Zealand when they brought ashore a colossal squid, and it really looked like one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Whoa. Wow, Jan. I am so jealous. That must have been so cool to see because, yeah, the colossal squid is massive and really neat. So we talked a little bit about Canada's coastline, over 200,000 kilometers which of the following oceans does not border Canada? And that would be C, the Southern. So on our East Coast, we do have the Atlantic Ocean just around us here in the Maritime Provinces. Up North, we do have the Arctic Ocean. And on the West Coast, we do have the Pacific Ocean. The Southern Ocean, a little bit more Southern than we are. <laughs> Going back to the moon snail's egg structure there, we actually call this a sand collar, not to be confused with a sand dollar. Yeah, so just like uh, Jan is showing us, a collar, as we know, is a part of your shirt. So the reason we call these sand collars is because they look like the big fancy collars that people used to wear on their shirts. So probably a lot bigger than my shirt collar looks and you could actually detach it but I think this looks kind of like the sand collar we see there in the picture. Maybe not such a great look for me. I don't know if the Dracula look, I can pull it off, but that's what we call a sand collar for. Cool. Number 10, 
we asked you, true or false, the great white shark is the biggest species of shark in the world. And that would be false because while the great white shark is big, they can grow up to 20 feet. The whale shark can grow up to 60 feet or 18 meters. So cool. Yep, they are massive. And we call them the whale shark, as you can see on the left there, not just because they're big, but because that big mouth he has is kind of like a whale's mouth. Whales and whale sharks eat by filter feeding, so they suck a bunch of water into that big mouth of theirs and they filter out the small fish and plankton that they want to eat. So the whale shark does that just like whales do, and that's how he gets his name. Cool. Isn't it amazing how some of the biggest creatures eat the smallest little things? Our friend Courtney on the comments was just pointing that out. It's such a unique and amazing thing. The blue whale, the biggest thing has ever lived, swimming around eating something that's so teeny tiny. Yeah, you folks are right. That is pretty crazy to me. Imagine how much water and how much plankton such a big whale is going to have to suck in to make himself full. So our next question was about air bladders on seaweed. And what they do is make them float. Number or B, I should say. So the reason that they need to do this is because seaweeds get energy from the sun and that's called photosynthesis. So although seaweeds aren't technically plants, we call them algae, they are a lot like the plants we have here on land, like trees and flowers who get their energy from the sun. So the fact that the seaweed floats helps it get as much sunlight as possible. Me too, I like to get as much sunlight as possible, but it's a little bit cloudy here today. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. We can hope. <laughs> and our last question for round one, approximately what percent of the Earth's surface is covered by the ocean? And the answer is D, 70%. That is a lot of ocean out there, guys. Yeah, that's crazy. Awesome, Joe. Well, thank you. That was really fun. And I definitely did learn a few things. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, you guys. I'm so excited for us to carry on with round two. Yeah. Round two! Joe, that was amazing. Thank you so much. I seriously learned a bunch of things in there. That was so cool. Now, I have to confess that for round two, the first five questions that Jan, I think Jan's going to read them, I got those from a friend of mine who is a shark researcher. So we have five shark questions coming up. Her name is Brendel Davis. She works for the Ocean Tracking Network. Um, she's a researcher at Dalhousie. She is, her whole job for those kids listening out there, her job is to research sharks. How cool of a job is that? So, you know, if you want to grow up and do the same, you certainly can. We're getting lots of People writing in 10 out of 11, 5 out of 12. Oh, some seriously amazing scores here. Landon, 9 out of 12. You guys are smarter than me. 8 out of 12 for Dylan. Good job. Before we start the next round, I do want to say a couple more people were saying hello, and I just want to mention them. Uh, Elliot, Nathaniel, and Molly are watching from Halifax. Sydney is watching from PEI. Violet and Wesley hey. say hi from Halifax. Emmanuel is playing from Anaganish. Whoa. Clara is from Nova Scotia as well. Davey. What's up, Davey? Hi, Davey. Nicola. Oh, my goodness. And there's uh, Charles Tupper School. Andy is watching, and he says a bunch of his classmates are watching too. So hello, everyone from the school. It's so great that you're joining us. Wow. Very I got to cool. say a little shout out to Nicola and Gwenny, who are my neighbors just up the street who are watching right now. I love seeing them. We always talk about going on cool adventures. So it's great to have everybody here together. And we're going to get rolling with question number one. Now, this is really cool if you think about it. Sharks are amazing. And again, we want to thank our friend Brendel for giving us these great questions. Shark researcher, cool job alert, question one. 
What shark has 360 degree vision? That means it can see in every direction. Is that A, the blue shark? Is that B, the hammerhead shark? C, is that the sandbar shark? Or D, is that the angel shark? Which one is it? You know, and sharks are, they come in so many cool shapes and sizes that it really, it could be lots of different types of shark. Now, we have talked already about the largest shark in the world, a whale shark, and they are so cool looking and also very gentle. Lots of people go snorkeling and diving with whale sharks. But what's the smallest shark in the world? Is that A, the dwarf lantern shark? I wonder if it lights up like a lantern. Is it A, the dwarf lantern shark? Is it B, the pygmy shark? And pygmy is another word for very small. So it could be the pygmy shark. But C, is it carpet shark? The carpet, because it's right down on the floor. Or is it D, the zebra shark? I kind of hope it's the zebra shark, because I also, you know, if we were talking about land animals, zebra is certainly one of my favorites. So which one is it? What's the smallest shark in the world? The dwarf lantern, the pygmy, the carpet, the zebra. You tell us, put your answer down. Now, you know, goodness gracious, do we ever have some cool animals here in Nova Scotia. But what big sharks do we have right here in Atlantic Canada? And we really do have some super cool ones, but which of these sharks do we have here in our waters around Nova Scotia, around Atlantic Canada? If you're tuning in from somewhere else, come visit. We'd love to see you. So is it A, hammerhead, tiger, blue, and poor beagle sharks? Is it B, the mako shark, the bull shark, the blue shark, and the hammerhead? Is it C, the great white shark, the poor beagle, the blue, and the mako? Or is it D, the salmon shark, the poor eagle, the blue, or the tiger shark. Rawr. Which of those sharks are right here living with us in Atlantic Canada? Can you tell us? We would love to know. Actually, this is a tough one because I know some of these we've already talked about live here. Some I don't know. It's a tricky one. What do you think, Chris? Oh, well, I saw the answer, so I know. I know you know. Okay. <laughs> Joe, what do you think? Do you know? Guys, I am going to have to go, it's really tough, but I think it might be C. I'm really hoping the poor beagle is found here because I think poor beagle is the coolest name I've ever heard. So I really hope we can find him in our waters. It definitely wow. sounds like an adorable shark. Yeah. Now, I know because I have seen it that many of you, in fact, you know, some of my neighbors who I've already mentioned, like Gwenny and Ekela, they're really fast. They run super fast, but what's the fastest shark in the ocean? Same thing with those Tros family kids down there in beautiful Long and Briar Island. They're really fast. I know you guys are fast, but what's the fastest shark in the ocean? Is that the bull shark? Is that the tiger shark? Is that the mako shark? Or is that the white shark? Which one's the fastest? How fast can it go? Because I know you guys can go really fast too. Hmm, which one is it? A or B or C or D? This one's cool. Ah, yeah. Well, this is really neat. And this is, again, why trivia and why getting together like this is so fun because we learn so many new things. And this is certainly something that I just learned today. So what shark can walk on land and you heard that correctly what shark can walk on land this is wild is it a the appalit shark is it b the port jackson shark is it c the angle shark or d the carpet shark which shark can walk on land it just doesn't seem like it could possibly be true maybe it's a trick question Maybe it's a quick shark. <laughs> is it E, none of the above? <laughs> it's not an option. It's not actually an option, but which one? And finally, before I hand it over to Chris, how many known marine life forms are there in the ocean? Now, folks, 
life as we know it on planet Earth. It would not have happened if it wasn't for our oceans. And our oceans are very unique to our beautiful planet Earth. So how many marine life forms live there in our oceans now? Are there 10? Are there B, thousands? Are there C, hundreds of thousands? Or are there D, millions of types of marine life forms, some of which have not even been discovered? And that's what's so incredible. You know, scientists, some say that we know more about the surface of the moon than we know about the depths of our oceans. So there's still... For those people who want to be a scientist, don't worry. There's still lots of things to be discovered. So which one is it? Is it 10, <clears throat> thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions? Yeah, they say that only 5% only of the ocean has been discovered. Less than 5%. There I bet go. some of our viewers out there are going to grow up and make that number a little bit bigger. I bet some of you guys who are interested in the ocean might find some new animals one of these days. I agree. And we seem to have lots of, uh, you know, lots of people who are, who want to be marine biologists watching. So keep it up. Okay. So question number seven, we've talked about some of the different oceans that we have in the world, but which one is the biggest? Is it A, the Atlantic Ocean, B, the Pacific Ocean, or C, the Arctic Ocean? We'll see. It's a big, big place out there. So this is a cool question as well. What percentage of life on Earth is in the ocean? What percentage of life on Earth is found in the ocean? Is it 5 to 10%, 25 to 50, or 50 to 80? life on earth so we talked about how we've talked about how big the ocean is how many species are in the ocean but how much of life is actually in the ocean the percentage which gives you an idea of how big the ocean is couple another quick shout outs here that we just love to say hello to people who've taken the time to say hello to us we've got vivian and jen who are watching from lunenburg Yay. Beautiful, beautiful Lunenburg. I know that up in Lunenburg last summer, just off of Lunenburg, they saw the great white sharks. We've got Katie, who's tuning in all the way from London, Ontario. Good morning, Katie. Hi, hello, and thank you for joining us. This is so great. So many cool people. I think we should do this every week, don't you think? Yeah. Okay, this is one of my favorite. What is the biggest turtle in the world? Is it A, a Jan turtle? I mean, a snapping turtle. Rah. B, the leatherback sea turtle. C, the stink pot turtle. Ooh. Or D, the blandings turtle. What is the biggest? And I can't wait to show you the answers because the picture I have it is big <laughs> Chris I gotta say the stink pot turtle does not sound like somebody I would like to meet <laughs> yeah maybe it's just a trick just so that you won't get too close to them <laughs> a flying fish can jump out of the water and fly out of the water for 600 feet is that true or false Ooh. That can't be true. Is it true? Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Can fish actually jump out of the water and fly? What do you think? You think it's possible? I don't know. We'll find out. True or false? Flying fish. Flying fish. <laughs> and our last question, our bonus question. Whoa. One of my favorite movies. What is the address that Nemo's father is looking for in the movie Finding Nemo? Is it A, 22 Diamond Way, Sydney? B, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney? C, 22 Herman Way, Sydney? Or D, 42 Shellfish Lane, Sydney? 
Do you know the answer, Jan? Oh man, well, you know, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I share a very cool uh, experience with other people because I have been to this place. I have gone and looking for it and I am happy to report at least at the time that I was there, it actually was a dentist's office. <laughs> cool. And you know, because my lovely wife is a dentist that we love dentists. <laughs> Which one is it though? I can I tell you. And Dory in the movie says it lots of times. In fact, it's one of the few things that she can remember. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's go over some answers. So if everyone, again, if you want to send in uh, pictures of you guys playing, pictures of your answers, whatever, just send anything you want to trivia at aforadventure.ca so that we know that you're playing. And uh, we're going to take all those emails and we'll respond to every single one of them and attach some prizes and some games that you can play um, after this is all over for some more activities. Well, dun dun dun. We're starting to see some of those comments coming through. And it there is gotta, a thing people you want, really. You want to do the, uh, the first six, Jen? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I do. Go for it. Well, folks, we talked about sharks to get this round started. And we have seen on the comments, lots of people love sharks. And that's because they're such amazing animals. And this is a perfect example of that. 360 degree vision, the hammerhead shark. Look at those eyes out there. They can just see in all directions. Lots of different guesses as to why the shape of their head is like that. Some say it has to do with sensory perception. Uh, lots of different things. And this again, we're still figuring out some of the different things about these animals. So even though the animals have been discovered, we're still learning about them. And this is one of the amazing facts. So if you guess B, hammerhead shark, you are correct. <coughs> Look how tiny that little shark is. So this is the smallest shark in the world. We've talked about the biggest. We've talked about some of the ones in the in between -y. But A, if you guess the dwarf lantern shark, and I'm looking at that shark thinking that, it uh, doesn't look like a lantern to me, but it does look awfully small if they can fit in the palm of your hand. And that's the dwarf lantern shark, the smallest shark in the world. I don't think it could give you a very big bite. Unless maybe you were a fairy, in which case it would probably give you a very big bite. Beware all of my fairy friends out there. So number three was what big sharks do we have here in Atlantic Canada? Well, there are some really cool ones. As we've already mentioned, the great white shark, you know, again, folks, not something that you need to be particularly concerned about, but it does at times make their way up here along the Nova Scotia coast. Who wouldn't want to come vacation here in Nova Scotia? It is awfully beautiful. But we also have the poor beagle. And like Joe pointed out, that's a sweet name of a shark. And then we have the blue shark. Some people will call those blue dog sharks. And then the mako shark. And interestingly enough, the word mako, do you know what it means? No. It means shark. Oh, well, that's so appropriate. It's the shark, shark. Shark, shark. Shark, shark. No, it's shark, shark. shark. It's shark squared. Speaking of mako. Oh, well, which is the fastest shark? in the world what a great question the mako shark the shark shark is indeed the fastest and it's been clocked at over 74 kilometers per hour and that's pretty amazing so you know if you were here in halifax and you were a mako shark you could swim all the way up to say windsor or almost to wolfville all in an hour because you're a shark and you can swim super fast and that's the fastest shark in the world the mako shark yeah, that is pretty cool. So that's when they when they cruise around, even just cruising, they're going about 35 kilometers an hour. And then when they really want to take off, they can go up 74. That's, that's crazy. That's very fast. Look at this guy. Oh, well, what shark can walk on land? Now, again, folks, this is why this is so fun, because we learn new things every time we do this. What shark can walk on land? I didn't even think this is real, but the Apollet shark. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apollet, I believe. But somebody, if you know the actual pronunciation, please let me know. It can walk between coral heads at low tide along the seafloor and even on land when needed. For that reason, it's often called the walking shark. So what an amazing 
adaptation that it's taken on so it can get from one place to another. Super, super interesting. The Appalachian shark can walk on land. That's crazy. That is so that cool. It's crazy. And that's new. I didn't know that before. And I know lots about sharks. So hopefully sometime if I'm out walking, I will run into an Appalachian shark just on the street. Land shark. <laughs> on the street, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a cup of coffee. And number six, folks, if you were to guess how many known marine life forms are there in the oceans, well, you know, again, we don't know the full extent of how much marine life lives in the ocean. There's still plenty of things to discover. But if you were to guess in the millions, you would absolutely be correct. And I suspect if you start even getting down into the very small, small things that live in the ocean waters and, and even small little uh, cellular things that live inside of other cellular things that live inside bigger and bigger fish, goodness knows there could be hundreds of millions, perhaps even billions. But if you said billions, you are correct. Okay, what is the largest ocean? Jan, did you know this? I did know this. I have flown across the Pacific Ocean many times, and it takes a super long time in a plane. So I would guess that it's a pretty big body of water. And did you know the Pacific Ocean is 155 million square kilometers, which is larger than the total land area of the whole world? That's so crazy. I'm Very gonna cool. give a full horsey a... lips to that one. Yeah. That's crazy. That big... So number eight, what percentage of life on earth is found in the ocean? Can you believe that it's up to 80% of life on earth is found in the ocean? And the reason that I put this picture here is just to show how important it is to not litter. And this is what happens when you throw things like plastic bottles um, and other plastics, they end up in our oceans. Um, so always when we can try to use reusable cups and mugs. So I have my reusable coffee mug here that I use every single day um yeah so that we don't uh, we don't uh, litter in the ocean because it's even though we can't see it in the ocean it's there and that sometimes can be you know some of the animals can think it's food and get stuck and get choke so we have to do our best to not litter and i always try to do my best to not litter as well i believe it was the immortal sebastian the crab who said life is better down where it's wetter take it from me very well said so, remember I was talking about the biggest turtle in the world? Look at that thing. Can you believe this? This was apparently taken somewhere in Mexico. And I did look it up just to make sure that it was real. This is a leatherback sea turtle. How old this is an example. Be? They can be hundreds of years old. Yeah. Um, but this is just incredible. I mean, what a... I, I hope that it got back into the water and it was fine. Uh, but so cool. That's remarkable. Now, That's... leatherback sea turtles also come here to Nova Scotia, come up to, into Canadian waters. They swim all the way up from where they lay their eggs down in South America or Central America, make their way up here to eat their favorite food, which just so happens to be jellyfish. Yeah. And Landon just pointed out in the comments that he remembers when he did the ocean cleanup with us. Oh, right, Landon. That was so fun. Yeah. So we'll have to, do, we'll do that again, Landon. I promise it, as soon as we're allowed to, as a group, we'll go out and pick up some more garbage because that was a very fun day. And thank you so much for coming and helping. Okay. This one is the coolest. So flying fish, it is true. Flying fish do exist and they can fly over 600 feet in the air. So they get up to speeds in the water of about 30 kilometers an hour, 35 kilometers an hour, and then they jump out of the water. Oftentimes, the reason they're jumping out of the water is to escape their prey. So they might have prey in there trying to catch them, to eat them for lunch, and they pick up speed, and then to get away from the other fish they're trying to eat them, they jump out of the water, and they can soar in the air over 600 feet. That's so cool. You think that the other fish are jealous of the flying fish? Oh, definitely. I'm jealous of the flying fish. I kind of am too. They get to be in the water and they get to fly? Come on. 
That is the coolest. And the bonus question, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Ask me, I'll tell you again. Yeah. <laughs> Well, folks, let us know your scores. We would love to hear from you. How did you do? Did you learn some new things? Give us also some ideas, perhaps, on future episodes of other things that we might be able to talk about and learn about together. But before we go, we just want to make a huge thank you and another mention to the amazing folks at the Back to the Sea Society. Thank you, Joe, and everybody there who, if you are keen to learn more about the ocean, which I know Chris and I always are, they are a great touch point at their touch tank for you to learn all about the ocean. Joe, would you like to say anything else? Yes. Thank you so much, Jan. And thank you, Chris, as well. And everybody over at A for Adventure for welcoming me to your channel today. It has been such a pleasure to organize this trivia with you and get to meet all of the fun viewers out there who had a chance to participate. Just a reminder, if you haven't yet, grab a photo of yourselves or your score and send it in to the email so that we can get you some fun prizes and our fun coloring sheet. And uh, we do have our Shell and Tell series that will be coming out with a new episode soon. So you folks can check that out on our website, backtothesea.org. Thank you all so much for being with us here today. And one last thanks to Chris and Jan for being such incredible hosts. Thanks guys. Thank you, Joe. It was so much fun. Um, yeah, let's do it again sometime. Uh, seriously, this was this was just awesome. I learned a lot. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope everyone had fun out there. I hope everyone's keeping safe out there. And like Jan said, if you have ideas for other uh, episodes we can do, we, we love doing these. Um, send us some ideas. Uh, but yeah, make sure to send us an email at trivia at aforadventure.ca. We'll get you over some cool stuff um, for doing that. So thank you again for tuning in. I hope everyone has a lovely Wednesday afternoon. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming along. We'll play some music for you on the way out, but in the meantime, thank you for joining. It was great to see you and we'll see you again soon. Here we go. Thanks for coming, everybody.